Hi everybody, welcome back to another beautiful day here on my farm in central Portugal. In this video, I'm going to be tackling a project that I've been looking forward to for a long time. Not looking forward to because of the actual work and the project itself, because it's a lot of hard work, but because of what the end result will give us. Our property is currently unfenced. It is walled around the entire perimeter and some of the walls are very high, so we don't need to worry about fencing there. But in other areas, the walls are pretty low and animals can come in and as well the dogs could go out if they wanted to. Luckily, Teddy and Poppy are both very good. We have showed them the boundaries to the property and they understand those boundaries and they've never strayed and gone over them. And generally, when we're sat outside the house or when we're anywhere else in the land, the dogs actually want to be near us. However, we can never completely relax when we're outside with the dogs and they're off the lead because we always have to keep an eye on them. Although they don't want to stray, there can be other animals come in or if a cat was to come through, for example, maybe they would give chase and jump over. In an ideal world, we would fence the entire property now. But as I'm sure you can imagine, Fencing a three acre property is first of all very expensive and second of all extremely time consuming if you're doing it by yourself. If you want to hire it out to somebody else of course they'll do it much quicker but there's lots of men, it takes lots of man hours and the cost is very high. So fencing the entire property is definitely a long term goal but in the short to medium term our plan is to fence the area around the house. So it's an early start today. I'm trying to get as much done as possible whilst it's early before the sun really rises and it starts to get incredibly hot. This isn't really an ideal job for summer, but we are planning on going back to the UK in the not too distant future. So I really need to press on and get the property fenced, gated and feeling secure. So let me give you a quick rundown of what the plan is. So as you can see behind me, the house and the big water tank are set up on a big terrace that's about four foot high. So the plan is to fence all around this terraced area and kind of make an immediate garden around the house. In the future, we'll probably have that area set up with sprinklers to keep that grass nice and green through the summer and kind of make that more of a preened garden, whereas the rest of the land will be more wild. So in addition to the fencing, we also want to put three gates in. The first gate will be a three meter wide gate here at the front of the driveway. The second gate will be a smaller one meter wide pedestrian gate, which is going to go about there. And that's gonna lead through to the cabin. So that will create a nice little walkway between the cabin and the main house. And finally, the third gate will be here right behind me. It will be another big wide three meter gate that will lead through down from the top terrace down to the lower terrace and then you can access the pasture. And this is where I'm gonna start working today. So where I just walked down there, that ramp didn't used to be there. This actually used to be a much narrower opening kind of only really suitable for a couple of people to walk down side by side. And when we first came here, we thought, well, if we ever wanted to have a tractor or we ever wanted somebody else to come with a tractor to either cut the grass or do something on the property, we wouldn't be able to access past the house and into the rest of the land. So what we decided to do was to fill this whole area with soil. I removed a little bit of the terrace wall to make it a bit wider and I packed it within soil and that was maybe three or four months ago so that's nicely settled we still need to raise it a bit more and that's what I'm going to try and do this morning before I get absolutely cooked by the sun so the dirt that I need to raise the level down by the new pasture gate I'm going to take from this area here because this is actually in the way of where I want to fence. I'm right up by the driveway and I want the driveway post to be here, the fence to run off at a bit of an angle and then come along here in front of this big granite hill that we have behind me. This is a two birds, one stone situation because I need to move this in order to get this fencing in, but I also need dirt for down the bottom end. So 
I can get both jobs done at the same time. This is not a fun job to do in the summer. It's so dusty. I'm getting absolutely caked. been a couple of days uh, since I last filmed and excuse me if I sound very tired and look a bit dishevelled but it's been a tough couple of days working. I've just been digging so much to raise that level for the pasture gate and the weather has been so hot it was brutal. I couldn't really film because the camera kept overheating and I just couldn't keep faffing around with the camera so I just had to press on and keep going. So I'll show you what I've done. So when I left you last time, I think you saw me just digging out this small area here. Then over the next couple of days, I've dug out all of this, kind of up to, from like this level down to the ground, all the way along here to the house. It looks like quite a large area and a lot of earth when you're looking at it here. But when you see where I've put it, it looks like next to nothing. And here is where it's all gone. So the gate's going to be about here in line with the front of the tank. And this area was a lot lower, but we want to bring it up to the same level so the gates can open inwards and it's all flat on the top. So yeah, like I say, it's come up about a foot across that whole area. It's been tamped down, it's been watered. It feels pretty firm, but I definitely want to leave it another few more days before starting to dig any holes for the post, just to let it settle a bit more. Also, just to let you know, I am aware that in this video, I'm wearing the most disgusting t-shirts. I was looking back at the footage from the other day in the green t-shirt and it's horrible. These are all been sweated and suntan lotion and bleached by the sun, but I knew this was gonna be a filthy job. So I just picked the grubbiest clothes I had to put on so I didn't ruin anything nice. So now that the ground is leveled off for the pasture gate, uh, while that's settling, I'm gonna focus on the driveway gate and getting the posts in for that. So because we've got so much granite here behind the house, which comes down under the house and actually forms the foundation of the main building, I was a little bit concerned about how quickly I would hit granite here for where I want these driveway posts to go. So a few weeks ago, I started with some preliminary holes. 
I think you'll be able to see one there. And lo and behold, on this one, which is closest to the hill, we hit granite about six inches deep. I'd wanted to get an SDS plus drill um, in the near future anyway for working on the stone buildings and for generally using around the property. So I figured I would invest in one of those now with the appropriate drill bit and try and use that to break down this granite and be able to dig the hole and get the post in. So let's give it a go. So first problem of the day, the generator won't start. So I need to do a little bit of problem solving. There's plenty of fuel in there, so that's not an issue. Next, I'm gonna take out the spark plug, give it a bit of a clean, and then try and run it again. Hopefully that does the trick and I can crack on with drilling. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to call it a day on breaking down the granite inside this hole. I'm probably about halfway. I was using a breaker bit in the SDS Plus drill and the bit seemed to get stuck in a bit of granite and I was trying to jiggle it to get it back out again, but it wouldn't come. And all of a sudden, the base of the drill bit snapped off and sheared inside of the shank. So this little piece here was stuck inside the drill I managed to get this out the remaining part of the drill bit is still stuck within the granite I've got another longer drill bit to drill around it tomorrow and try and break some more granite and free the bit up and get it out and also finish off breaking the granite down but I can't really do that today here at the height of summer you shouldn't be using any metal tools especially on stone or things like that after 11 a.m just because of such a fire risk as you've seen, I've been constantly wetting this down all morning. Even though I started this really early when it was all in the shade and cool, you still have to take every precaution to make sure that you're being safe. So now with the machinery put away, it's time to get the good old spade and start digging the rest of the holes by hand.
Ooh, love this thing. It's called a uh, perfurador, which I think translates to just drill. Um, but it makes sense. It's, you use it for fence posts. It's really handy. Big spike on it, stick it in, and then the blades as you turn it slices it up. I find it a really good thing to start holes like this, but I'm going to get down to the desired depth. And then once I've done that, I'm going to widen the hole just with a normal spade. But I think you've seen enough of me digging for this video. So I'm going to leave you here for today and I'll pick you up again tomorrow. So I finally managed to get the granite broken down enough to get this front post in. It was a beast of a job and it's not one that I ever want to do again to be honest. I could have done with a big powerful jackhammer but I don't have one so I've had to make do with what I do have which was the STS drill. It was working really well with the breaker bit yesterday but unfortunately it snapped off so I just had to use what I had. But it's making me think about when I do the fencing along there, if I hit any granite I don't really think breaking it is an option for the fence posting. So I need to have a bit of a rethink about that one. Maybe drill some holes, put some rebar in the holes and then have the rebar sit inside the wooden post. We'll see, that's a job for another day. But now uh, it's about half four in the afternoon and I wanna move on and get all of these posts concreted in. Well, at least try to get all of them done today. So now that the posts are concreted in, they're gonna take a couple of days to cure properly. So I'm just taking a bit of a break in the shade, under the sail, and then once I've finished these, I'm gonna to talk to you about the gates. So when we started planning this little project, we were talking about gates and we were both in agreement that we wanted to get some custom-made gates. And we found a local blacksmith a couple of villages away Got speaking to him, the quality is really good and we're very happy. However, he was super in demand and his lead time was so long. And like I said earlier in the video, because we are heading back to the UK soon, this is a project we really needed to get on with and we couldn't wait. So we went online, we found some gates that looked really nice. We we're really happy with the price. They were gonna come in a couple of days, so we ordered them. We were a little bit disappointed when two days later, the courier turns up and we were expecting ready-made gates with some poles, posts, sorry, 
ready to hang. And he turns up with about five boxes like this. Nowhere on the website did it say that you had to build the gate yourself or anything like that. So it was a bit frustrating because now we have to build the gates. I've built two of them already. You know, it's, it's fairly easy to make, but it's just a bit time consuming. And I would have rather it was one welded piece, but we both decided we're gonna get these on now. And then in the future, when we finish this driveway off, we're actually gonna replace the main gate and possibly the one behind me to the pasture to some gates that we're happier with. And then we're gonna repurpose these gates and use them around the land because we want to be able to section off different areas, especially if we get sheep in the future. So let's crack on and build a couple of gates. It's been a couple of days since I concreted in the post, so they should now be nice and hardened and set. The gates are all made, as you can see behind me. So it's time now to remove the supporting posts for the gate posts and get hanging the gates. So a quick note about these posts, they actually came with the gates as part of a set. Personally, I would have preferred a bigger, chunkier post, maybe 10 or 12 centimeter diameter, but these came with it. They're designed to fit the brackets with all the holes pre-drilled, so we've just fitted them. I think in the future, we'll maybe have big rendered posts here, maybe with a wall coming part the way down to join the fencing and have it rendered and looking nice for when you first come to the property. both gates in. I think they look pretty good. Not perfect, but they look good. There's a couple of small tweaks that need doing, a couple of bolts adjusting just to get everything lined up perfectly. But I'm a perfectionist, so I need to do that just for my own sanity. But I'm gonna wait to do that another day. Right now, I need to get on and get this uh, bolt holder concreted in. So this bolt passes through that gate there, in down, to here and it holds it in place. So I'm gonna go mix some concrete and I will come back to you once this is in place. So there we go, job done. I'm really happy with how it turned out. This concrete is still setting, but a couple of days and it'll be good to go. Amazing. I think once the fencing is either side of those gates, it's really gonna close it in properly and make it feel like such a nice space up there. 
So I'm gonna leave you here and end the video. I've been working flat out from sunrise till sunset the last few days. I'm gonna take a well-earned break and have a nice ice cold beer because this sun is cooking me. I hope you can join me for the next video where I'll be finishing this project by fencing this entire top terrace as well as adding in the smaller pedestrian gate. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.